Hey, everybody, stand up. We're going to do something different a little than Vernay. Everyone stand up and introduce yourself to the person next to you as if you don't care about them. You don't care about them at all. Just kind of totally diss them. You just, you don't, you don't care. How did that feel for a second? That's kind of like bad. Now everybody reintroduce yourself as if this is your long lost best friend. Yeah. Woo! Thank you, you all can sit. Hey, I'll tell you what, what did we just do? We brought the energy back in. You know, the energy between two people, just two people. You know, that's, that's what marriages are about. That's what families are about. That's what companies are about. That's for sure. The whole reason that you're here is to meet just another one person. That's the missing link that has always been one friend. Today, you're supposed to be doing a job you love with people you love in a place you love where your family loves it and you can do it for the right reasons. Most people, they love the job, they hate the people. They love the people, they hate the job. They love the people, love the job, they hate the city. We got trouble. We're supposed to be doing things, things because we love it. You know, my dad when I was young, used to always try to bring me into a moment, a time, where all of a sudden I would see something and he would put it in my heart. I want to tell you a little story that actually will hopefully kind of get you thinking in this thing, this permission thing of actually being in something where you permission, give permission to someone to do something great. Now, my dad and I used to love Arnold Palmer. How many people knew Arnold Palmer? It's just, you know, one of the great golfers today of all time. And, and so Arnold, back in the day, my dad, when I was young, we, my dad and I used to stalk him everywhere he'd go. And I'll never forget, in 1973 at a Bob Hope Desert Classic, Arnold Palmer hit this shot into the woods. And there, back in the day, you would just be able to actually stand there. There was no ropes or anything. And so the ball's down and, and right here, and here comes Arnold Palmer across. And he was a stud. He would like hitch his pants. And the caddy came over, put the bag down. And the caddy looked at Arnie and said, look at Arnie, you'd have to hit this shot 240 yards underneath this tree. You would have to hook it left to a green that's tucked in tight with uh, traps all around it. Listen, this is too tough. Just hit a wedge right out here. Have you ever noticed that great people hate to hit wedges right out there? They want to do something, but they need energy from people around them. You need that. Every single day, we are desiring from the people around us, our loved ones, our family, our friends. We need encouragement. So Arnie's sitting there and he's like waggling the wedge, thinking to himself, and so since he gets his energy from the people around him, he slowly turns his head around to see who's there. And my dad and I are standing right there. And as he turns his head, he hits the, my dad's eyes. And my dad gives him the no sign to the wedge. The caddy goes, I saw that. Just hit the wedge right out there. Arnie kind of smirks and laughs. And he waggles the wedge again. And all of a sudden, he turns his head slowly and he, my dad gives him the no sign again. Arnie stalks over to see if he could hit the shot. He comes back and he waggles the forewood. Slowly, he turns his head and my dad gives him the yes sign. He barks at the caddy to get out of the way. He sets himself up, he looks at the shot and then he had this great finish. It just cleared underneath the tree and like, like a homing signal, boom, it turned left. And all of a sudden, it bounced up five feet from the pin. The crowd's going nuts. Arnold Palmer saluting my dad. And the whole folklore of Arnold Palmer is all because of my dad. <laughs> What's the point? Listen today. Permission. Energy. We've got to actually do that. I wrote a, I wrote a book called The Power of Who. I couldn't write a book called The Power of Friendship. I got 5,000 people on Facebook are my best friends, right? 
Everybody calls everybody their friend. It has no meaning anymore. But the who, the people who matter most in your life. Listen, you were given specific people. In fact, just think about this for a second. One of the things I'm going to talk today in my session is, what if each of us were actually given people in our lives to help us in ways we never imagine? What if those people weren't happenstance acquaintances? What if they were strategically given to you to help you find that place in life you always dreamed about? Could we have, like, missed destiny? What if finding our next job or helping our mom get into a hospital isn't about who we don't know but whom we've neglected? Now today, this is a real problem because everyone here has been taught that business and friendship is taboo. So let me get this correct. We're supposed to work with people we don't know and don't trust? Because of Ponzi schemes and Madoff strategies, we have to disclose our friendship as evil instead of declaring it as great? I'm just saying no. Everyone just say no. No, we're not going to do that. We do a thing on Fridays called Who Friday. At 2 o'clock every Friday, we stop business and just call our friends. We would actually just say, how are you? It's one of the hardest questions today to actually ask people because we're so used to watching Larry David or something on Curb Your Enthusiasm and he didn't really care what you thought anyway. So on Fridays, I call a friend. My, all our team, they just call friends. Would you be surprised that Fridays become our biggest day of business? Why? Well, giving. So I call a friend, I say, how are you? He says, you know, he said, you know, great. And I said, well, how's your wife, Mary? And he goes, well, you know, Bob. He says, he says, she's okay. And I go, well, what's the matter? And he goes, well, my son, Larry, he's a paraplegic. And, you know, he's, he's 23 now, and we're not sure he actually, you know, makes it to 30. And she's starting to feel that there's not enough moments. Oh, my gosh. I said, so... So what do you do? What does Larry like to do? And he sees his, his wheelchair kind of like a, a NASCAR. And so she says, you know, and, and, and he said, I said, do you go to the races? And he says, I said, who does he like? He likes Dale Earnhardt Jr. And so I said, wow, do you go? And he goes, yeah, I go. And I sit up in the handicap area with my son. I said, does Mary go? And he goes, oh, you know, I don't know. He said, you know, can, you know he says, you know, we can't really, you know, everybody can't go. And I said, have you ever been down to the pit? And so she, you know, he, he says, I don't know, it, maybe it's dangerous. I said, I'll call you right back. Immediately I call Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s agent. I said, hey, Timmy, so, hey, bud, listen, I need some who help. I said, listen to this story. And I tell the story of Larry and Mary and what we could do on a who Friday. I take the moment, okay? And he starts to say, I said, do you think Dale would do something amazing? And he goes, yeah, yeah, you know, I think that's possible. And I go, well, that just didn't sound very good. I said, listen, I got uh, Jimmy Johnson's a good friend of mine. I said, we need a little who leverage. So he said, no, 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 we could really do something. Now we're talking. They wheel Larry down, Mary and him. They come down into the pit. And there comes Dale and our junior. And he immediately has this he has this little Polaroid camera, and boom, he takes a picture of Larry, rips it out and throws the camera over to the side, and he's whipping it, and he takes him over to the car. And he says, Larry, oh my gosh, this is, this is my car. What do you think? Larry's coming unglued. Mary's having an unbelievable time. He says, look at this picture. And he goes, that's your picture. And he puts it in the visor, and he says, you and I, we're going to drive together today. And he puts on headphones on Larry and Mary, and he says, Listen, we're all part of the Dale and our junior team today. And he says, well, look it. He takes his jacket off, puts it around him, signs it to him, pulls another jacket out and puts it around Mary and says, let's go talk to all the other drivers and let's tell them about the Dale and our junior team today. He said, the first person I want to talk to is Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> Jimmy! Hey, Dale, what are you doing? Hey, we're going to kick your you-know-what today. What are you talking about? He said, I got Larry on my team. And Jimmy walks and goes, what were you thinking? Two days later, I get a call. I get a call from Mary, and she's crying on the phone. And she goes, what did you do? And I go, did something go wrong? And she goes, I got a moment now with my son. We're part of the team. I mean, oh, my gosh. He talked as he went around the track. He mentioned Larry's name. We have now this moment together. She said, I'll never be the same. And I, I thought to myself, wow, 
Who Friday? One telephone call. Do you all know how amazing you are that you hold the key today to your friends and, and family's goals and dreams? That you got who? That you have a community of friends that would come to your aid if you'd ask them. That you're the ripple effect. That you're the person who can do it. The reason I, I'm here today is because the first lady wanted to talk today about friendship. She wanted to talk about the love. She needed to tell you who you are. That you're amazing. That you do one thing better than anybody else in the world. And we're, my job is to get that out of you today. To voice that dream. And then to put you with some people who are friends. That would actually help you achieve your goals. Only 3% of the country actually get their dream today. We have 23 million people out of a job. 69% of the people who, who, believe that a, who have jobs believe that a bad day at the beach is better than a good day at work. 80% not using their number one talent. I'm not trying with the power of who to get you into the 3%. I want you to be in the four, the five, the six. Doing something you love. Sharing that with your kids. But we don't like to ask today, right? So what's, what's that about? So if you all are my best friends and I asked you for help, would you help me? Well, I'd help you. Why would you deny me the same joy? There's a problem today about asking. And then there's a problem of asking the wrong who. People who are influencers rather than your friends. You don't see your friends as resources and conduits. Your friends... God didn't make a mistake with giving you your who. You are meant to be doing great and mighty things. And we need to encourage you. We need to lift you up. We need to remind you who you are, whose you are, and the path you were called. That you're a daughter of the king. That you do amazing things. That there's no one like you. This is the day that you ought to all of a sudden meet one new person. I'll tell you what, there's one of my favorite quotes in the world by G.K. Chesterton. He said this, that the one thing in life that gives radiance above other things is that there's something great just around the corner. Are you looking for it? I want to tell you one story more as I leave. I, I, I had a dream that I'd always end up playing with my dad golf with Arnold Palmer, right? And I helped some guy do a, helped a guy do a, a search and get a job and, and he was very successful and it turned out to be amazing for him. And so he wanted to give me a gift back and I told him, no, I, I didn't go to the interview for you. You did it. Congratulations. Awesome. And he goes, no, I want to give you a gift. No, yes, no, yes. I said, forget it. And he says, hey, how about you and me and your dad and my dad play golf? I said, great. And he says, can I bring a friend? I said, sure. He said, I'm bringing Arnold Palmer. You know Arnold Palmer? You've been holding back? We had this amazing day. Arnold Palmer at the end of the day tells me that he developed a golf course in Saudi Arabia. Oh my gosh, Saudi Arabia. He said that at the end, the king wanted to give him a gift. And he said, no, I don't. I've charged you a lot of money. I don't do this. And he says, no, I want to give you a gift. And so he says, well, you know, it, it, everything went to work good. You don't have to do it. And he said, no, yes, no, yes. Until the king said, hey, I'm the king. If I tell you I'm going to give you a gift, you're going to take my gift. He said, Bob, I blew the protocol. So he said, the king then turns to him and says, what do you want? What do you want? What do you like say to a king? So he's trying to get out of the conversation. He says, I collect golf clubs. So he's flying home. Arnold's flying home. He thinks to himself, this is the richest man in the world. He might get me an all-gold driver. It could be gem with rubies and diamonds and emeralds. He's thinking, 10 days go by, nothing. 13 days, nothing. No box. He's waiting for his box. On the 15th day, he gets a letter from the king. And he's totally bummed. He goes, Bob, I just got a letter. I'm bummed. He said he opens up the letter, and it's a deeded trust for 495 acres of a golf club. He bought an entire golf club. Kings think differently than we do. They think golf club, and we think golf club. It's a great story, and here's his thought. Now listen, Arnold Palmer turning to me and saying, so what are you thinking about your life? I go, what do you mean? Are you thinking golf club or golf club? As a man thinketh, as a woman thinketh, so are you. Listen, I don't care what your dream is. I don't care what's ever 
hindered you before. Listen, you have to dream bigger. And the person that's sitting next to you, around you, the friends you were given, they're so much more powerful than you have. Our goal is for friendship. God bless you all. Look forward to seeing you.